Hello and welcome to another Britain's Best b -roads. We're in the Garys today, still on lockdown. We're going to take the opportunity to do a little job on the car that's been needing done since I got it. And that is the oil pressure. More specifically, uh, the gauge, the reading of it. Uh, when you start the car, the oil pressure gauge immediately registers 5 bar of pressure, um, which is nonsense. The way it should work on this car is that the, the gauge shouldn't register anything until you actually start the car. When you put the ignition on, that shouldn't do anything to the, to the gauge. So it's obviously an electrical problem. Now that could be one of three things. It could be the gauge itself on the dashboard. It could be electrical wiring earthing out somewhere so that when you turn it on it's just opening the full circuit because it's earthing out. Or the third and I, I think the most likely thing is the oil pressure sender itself which sits just underneath the oil filter in the engine uh, and these can, these are, this is the most likely thing to go bad because obviously this is part of the engine, it heats up and cools down, it heats up and cools down and that's not great for electrical systems so that's the most likely culprit that's, uh, that's causing it the challenge with this little fella here is where it sits it's uh, in a bit of the engine that's really quite tricky to get to um, it sits underneath the oil filter and above the power steering pump uh, so the way you should really try and take it out is by either taking the power steering pump off or dropping it down and then getting in with a crow's foot onto the side of it it's a 24 mil nut that uh, that holds it in get a crow's foot onto the side of it and then just crank it you know straight by taking the wheel off um, by taking the driver's side wheel off, coming in at that angle and breaking it off that way. Um, with old cars, as many of you will know, the fewest number of bolts you can undo, the better. The fewest number of components you can touch on a car, the better, particularly ones that are working. So I would rather not touch anything to do with the power steering system. It's working fine, it's not leaking, all the pipes and hoses are all okay. As soon as you start to touch something like that in an old car, you run the risk of um, you know, breaking a union or splitting a pipe or any of these sort of things. It's just not worth the hassle. So, another option of trying to get this fell off is to get your 24mm spanner that I have here, getting your angle grinder and cutting it in half. You can see there, there, just cut it in half, round, round off the edges so you don't split your hand off. And that should allow enough access to get this in from underneath. And you, you just need to break the seal on it um, and then you should be able to untighten it with your fingers. So let's have a go at, uh, at doing that. So one job you should always do if you're working with car electrics is disconnect the battery. In this car it is in the boot in here, just a little 13mm under the neg negative terminal. Even though this system's not live connected to the oil pressure sender, better safe than sorry, it only takes two secs. Okay, so we're under the front of the car, the driver's side. Power steering pump here. You see it just up in there is the oil filter. Should line it there. Uh, and then directly underneath it here. You just see that in there? That is the oil pressure sender. So we disconnect the electrical connections to that first and then see if we can actually disconnect, uh, unscrew it from the car. So electrical connections off and you can just see I managed to get the 24mm on there. Um, but strong though I am, <coughs> uh, my fingers aren't strong enough to break the seal on it because I've had any leverage because I've cut half the shaft of the spanner off. So what I'm going to do is get another long spanner. Uh, this is a 22 and a gap between the power steering pump and uh, the belt and put it on there and hit it with a hammer from underneath it's not a pretty way of doing it 
but we'll see if that's enough just to break the seal on the, the screw. So wish me luck. Good news, managed to get it off. Also this one here. It's always a good idea to check the parts against each other before you put the new one on. That one looks very slightly different, but uh, it should just be the case that as long as um, the threads are the same, which uh, they are, it should be okay. Obviously, that's got all of that, so it's a bit heavier. I didn't like the look of the, the washer that came on the new one. So I swapped it over for the one that was on it. Let's put that over the top so you can see what I mean. You can see the diameter of the new one's quite a bit bigger. So we'll go with the old one swapped on there. Now listen, just watch when you take that out. Although all the oil sits in the sump, the pipes that feed this have still got oil in them, so you will get quite a bit of oil coming scooshing out so all that remains um, I'll take these connectors off we'll just go with the ones that are on there just now they look uh, they look okay so I'll take these connectors off and get this part fitted and see how we go I can get a good shot of it there now I think I can get my hand in though so that big bolt uh, where is it here that 19mm bolt that's that is the pressure valve uh, itself and then this big hole here is where the send uh, the sender goes back in here we go moment of truth ignition on oh well it's not pegged up to uh, above five this is looking promising <laughs> Back on. Yep, yeah, get it. Fixed. There we have it. Job done. Uh, absolutely delighted. Uh, that was the easiest out of the three things that it could have been. It was either the sender, the wiring, or the actual gauge in the dashboard. Had it been the wiring, had it been you know, playing around with the multimeter trying to find where, where it was earthing out. Um, that could be a real pain. Uh, and if it was the gauge that would have meant taking part of the dashboard off to get to it which I really didn't want to have to do in old cars particularly um, old German cars of around the 80s the plastic that they used on the dashboard wasn't great the Porsche 92444 um, were notorious for the dashboard splitting and this dash is in pristine condition so I really didn't want to have to mess about the dashboard and risk uh, splitting any of the the fascia on the dashboard in it, so it's great news. Um, I do have a little confession to make, and that is uh, when I tried it the first time after replacing the sender, it uh, it didn't work. Here we go, fingers crossed, ignition on. Ah, but that's my own fault, my own stupidity. I looked at the wiring diagram and I got a little bit confused that the the G terminal on the sender I thought meant ground when we looked at the wire diagram blue was for the ground but I was completely mixed up because both terminals are for the sender one is for the gauge and others for the light um, the sender unit itself effectively grinds it to grounds it to the engine block so I got myself a bit confused swapped the, the wires around the other way and it's working perfectly so thank you very much for watching as it stands I don't think there's any more jobs to do left on the 944 I mean I could go crazy I could keep going replace the suspension bushes and all that sort of stuff but the car's driving great as it is just now so what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll just leave them until I feel that they're actually affecting how the car drives and then probably go through the whole car at that point replacing all the suspension bushes uh, shock absorbers and springs in the front but it definitely doesn't need it right now the brakes are all fine so there's nothing this car needs no more jobs to do on it um, so it's time to find the next project Thank you very much for watching. Please like if you have, subscribe for more videos, um, whether it be fixing the cars, projects, or hopefully one day uh, being out on the road for the road trips that this channel is actually meant to be about. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.